Yeah, my name is Swaggy C. Seven years ago, I was super broke in college and came across financial literacy and day trading. I stopped playing college basketball, dropped out of school my senior year, and spent the next few years learning about the stock market, Forex, real estate, business, and anything that had to do with finances. I became a babysitter in Greenwich, Connecticut to pay my bills while trying to become a consistent trader. Over the next few years, I got on a few TV shows, lived in Prague, Czech Republic, and actually met a woman named Bailey on Big Brother, who I soon asked to be my wife on national TV. After returning to her hometown in Missouri, we rented a Penske truck and drove 33 hours and moved to Los Angeles. Instead of returning to TV, I retired in the prime of my career. It wasn't making me happy at all. Every time I was on a TV show, I knew that all I wanted to do was to focus on day trading, private equity deals, and everything relating to finances, because that's what makes me happy. I ended up putting my all into finance and day trading and created two businesses. Now, with more than seven different streams of income that generates millions, a healthy family, and an empire being built, I'm the happiest I've ever been. And the crazy part about all that is, I'm just getting started. Job, I get it done, but you should know that. Shot like a son of 101, you should know that. I get the front and in the back, you should know that. No need to stun, it's never cap, you should know that. Yo! I have been locked away in a dungeon for the last year, working my face off to the point that I have neglected my own TV show because we all remember season two, episode five of Secure the Swag ended so abruptly. Something I didn't like, something I know for a fact you guys hated, but all of those moments led us to being right here, which is season three, episode one of Secure the Swag. And I promise on every thing that I love. This is going to be the craziest season ever. But before we get into that, like I said, it's been a full year since season two ended and it ended randomly. And I know that's the last time you guys really saw your boy Swaggy C in the flesh. And I feel it's only right to kick this episode off with recapping on everything that happened. So in March, I started laying the foundation on a brand new program that I was creating called the GOAT Academy. I moved my mom back to CT and got her a penthouse. I surprised my brother with UFC tickets and we went to UFC 264. The deal between Ashley and I fell apart and was no longer. My wife and I left LA and moved to Dallas to build our dream home. I met a billionaire out there that I'm really, really close friends with to this day. Our builders in Texas were shady, so we ended up moving back to LA. The GOAT Academy launched. I have a whole new day trading goal for 2022 and we have a whole new team. Team, give it up. Yeah. You feel me? All of those moments had to happen to lead us to this exact moment right now. So I would say it all happened for the best because right now I have the team, I have the infrastructure, I have the mind space, and I have the creativity to give you guys a full season of Secure the Swag. And I'm not talking a season with five episodes like season two. I'm not even talking about a season like seven episodes like season one. I'm talking a legitimate Netflix style long season of Secure the Swag, something you guys have been asking for for a very long time. And I feel like me continuously talking is delaying it, which I don't want to do any further. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season three, episode one of Secure the Swag. Enjoy the episode. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, told me, you know, So, just the FYI, this is my temporary office space. I remember our neighbors next door who used to throw the crazy parties all the time. Well, they just got evicted, and guess who pulled up on the office space and occupied it? Us, me, Manifate, the squad. And y'all know, probably episode two, maybe episode three, y'all will see us pull up next door but that's neither here nor there y'all are here to hear my trading goals for 2022 and i have an insane trading goal this year and it is 
1.7 million to $3 million in pure day trading money. And that is what I'm striving for. I'm talking about aside from YouTube AdSense and sponsorships and the program I have and merchandise, I'm talking strictly from my trading broker. I wanna do something that the industry hasn't really seen, which is document everything from A to Z. Like, yeah, we all show screenshots here and there. I've showed me make 5,000 a day, 10,000, 15,000, or losing 3,000, 4,000 being transparent. But I wanna do what I did in my last video where I broke things down from beginning, middle, and end, and you guys saw the entire process. And you may ask, how am I gonna do that? Easy. First, I'm in the middle of creating an EA. That's first of all. Second of all, I'm also creating a software to track all of my trades because obviously I can use my FX book if I want to, but I want to create my own thing and it all will be public. So that is the goal. I want to shake up the industry a little bit, not to show off to anybody else, but more so just to provide transparency at a level you guys have not seen before. So please stick around and follow me on this journey this entire year because it's gonna get crazy real quick. So I'll see you guys soon and uh, I'll holler at you guys. With legal tender, cost me to be the winner. Fly out before I can see the winner. No more TV dinners. Wake up and roll me a wood in the morning. I heard it go good with the vitamin C. Baby. So guys, as everyone knows, we left Los Angeles and headed to Dallas. We actually rented a condo from this billionaire, Plano's own Giuseppe Pacini, my guy. And we started the process to building our mansion, our dream home. And we did everything we were supposed to do. You know, we went through the entire process. I built my credit back up, paid my taxes, had all the cash laid out and account for this home. Moving to Dallas was so exciting. Um just because I have a lot of fond memories there. Like all my friends from college live there. I was so excited to meet with Millennial Design Build. They did a lot of promising things. We had our dream house all mapped out and it was like time to just like execute. And Bailey's mom luckily wanted to attend, you know, all of the meetings from Missouri, you know, fly all the way down to Texas and just be in the meetings and see what is going on, what's actually in the contracts, what's being said verbally. The initial negotiations, um, my mom obviously stood back and let Chris and I do it because she wanted us to build rapport, but my mom owns a real estate company and I always knew that when it was time for me to build or buy a house, I was gonna allow my mom to negotiate. So as soon as we got kind of like the design part out of the way and it was time to talk about the contract, my mom's like, okay, let me know when you're ready, I'll come down. And I just don't think that the millennial design team was one expecting Chris and I to have like advocacy at all. I think they just thought we were like young and dumb. Um, and secondly, I don't think they realized that my mom has been in real estate for over 25 years and she genuinely like brokers, you know, deals. And it wasn't until we got the contracts back and we got a few text messages back that Bailey, I, and her mother felt very, very weird. So when they had a lot of stuff like red lines, they were like, oh, how do you know about this? And she's like, this is not standard. And I think they were shook. And the reason we felt so weird is because we got so many verbal confirmations. And I don't mean verbal confirmations where they were like monotone and like, oh yeah, it's all good. No, I mean, everybody was lit. It was all happy and laughing. There was flowers on the table. We was all drinking water and eating little snacks. And we all got up and hugged and said, oh, it's all great. Everybody agreed to everything. For me, I'm very aware of the strengths that my mom has and her strengths are negotiation. Her strengths are not being a pushover and she's just a strong, beautiful black woman. So I was very excited that she came in and negotiated. She wasn't mean, she wasn't rude. She just demanded what we needed and they agreed to it. So for me, it was a win. So everything she read line and we went down the line, they agreed to. He's checked off, yes, 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 I'll do this. This is the problem with building negotiations. This is all verbal agreements. And he sent the contract over and we were so excited. We literally signed it immediately. Like not even 24 hours went by, we literally signed it immediately i got it right i got it you feel me not even 24 hours went by and we signed the contract and to celebrate we literally picked up packed our bags and went to our favorite place grand velas a resort in mexico where we go to either relax or just to celebrate and when we get there a few days at grand velas our realtor texts us saying hey the owner said He's not comfortable with this negotiation. And if we don't go back to the original contract, he's gonna put the lot back on the market 
within the next three days. We signed our contracts and we flew out the next day. They called and were like, hey, he actually wants to change a few things. And we're like, well, that's not what we'd agreed upon. We already have our contract signed. So if he wants to stall the deal, that's on them. They call us back and say, you know, well, he's saying if you don't agree to his new terms by this weekend, then he's going to put your lot uh, back on the market on Monday. And that caught us off guard. It wasn't like a, hey, can we renegotiate or actually agreed in person, but I thought things over. It was like, hey, if you don't do this in three days, I'm putting it back on the market. Screw y'all. And we were shook. Like we're literally in Mexico celebrating. We felt like it was a done deal. Again, Bailey and I had zero idea anything was wrong. We went to Mexico to celebrate. We signed the contract and waited a few days just to get told, oh, like they're having cold feet. And if you don't do it their way, you know, they're gonna put the lot back on the market within the next three days and it felt more like a threat as opposed to a proposition. So we were like, okay, we don't respond well to threats. Like, we're not about to play this game. So if you wanna do that, go ahead and do it. And again, he was shook because when we said that, he's like, no, 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 we can work on the deal. And by that time, the trust is broken. So I don't wanna do anything with you. I haven't even started building this house. This is a house that's gonna bring you and your business a lot of money and you're already acting crazy with me. So I'm, I'm not for it. So Bailey and I was like, F this, we're not gonna feel threatened by somebody. And I know they didn't mean for it to come off as a threat, but it felt like a threat to us, especially when we signed it and it's been a few days and we're already celebrating in Mexico. And the messed up part about it all is they kept the 45,000 earnings payment that we paid a while back and threatened us with lawyers if we dare to try to get it back so i see what people mean when they say builders are the nicest people in the world when they're just meeting you the second week the third week but when you're nine months in and y'all have done so much to where they feel like oh they got the leverage because they can do whatever they want because you're not just gonna leave your dream house especially if you spent the last nine months doing it this news completely rained on our parade um in the middle of a beautiful Mexican trip and um, we were having the time of our lives. So it's very frustrating that this happened because our moving to Texas was because we were building a house. We didn't move to Texas because that was what, you know, it was time to move to Texas. We wanted to move there so we can make sure we were a part of this build. So the fact that we were not building swags, um, demeanor immediately changed. If we weren't getting our house, which was the only reason we decided to move to Dallas, what is the point of being there? I love LA, I love the city, and I was downsizing to a smaller square footage house, you know, to prepare for the big one. I had no friends out there, no family. The culture out there in Plano is different from downtown Los Angeles. I am so excited to get the hell up out of Texas, man. Everything started to hit me at once, and I was like, nah, if we're not getting a house, I'm not staying another day in Texas. So from that moment on, it took Bailey and I less than 10 days to fly back to LA, visit our old penthouse and see if it was something we really wanted, apply for it, fly back to Texas with our movers, have them pack everything up, send them back to LA while we get out of our lease with the condo and with JP, take the L on the office space that we literally just spent all that money on a week prior, come back to LA, and actually settle down in LA right before Thanksgiving. It took less than 10 days. And for me, it's like, when you want something, you just have to take the risk and do it. I wanted to go to Dallas to build a house and see how life is out there with less taxes. I wanted to move back to Los Angeles once I felt miserable out there, when most people would have been like, oh, give it a chance, give it one to three years. I'm not giving myself and my life, especially with how young I am, three years to be miserable. It's for some people, it's just not for Swag EC. So I do not regret going out there because it taught me a lot of valuable lessons. Like I said, I got my credit up out there. I had more time to read the Bible and spend more family time with Bailey and get acclimated to the suburban life. I got a chance to see how builders really are. And now it turned me and Bailey all to the point where we may just buy a house in, in the future and just add on things instead of building a house from scratch. Coming back to LA and I have a whole new team that I didn't have last year. So while people may say, oh, you just wasted three, four months of your life, I'm grateful for every single moment of it. And I'm dead serious. Yeah, when I blow up, I'm a sore high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living out my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole wrist covered up in ice. In case you guys missed it, I got my brother the dopest present ever. I got him front row seats 
to UFC 264, I got him a chance to meet everybody and that literally motivated him so much because the UFC was always his favorite sport. He always loved to fight, whether football, basketball, and baseball. And the UFC was his favorite sport before it even went mainstream. And I'm going to Thailand myself too, but I'm only going for two months while he's going for six. So I will catch him on the end of his journey. Speaking of UFC 264, we haven't posted Secure the Swag in a year, so I don't think you guys ever got a chance to see how crazy it really was. And I think it's only right for you guys to see why it motivated us so much and why it made us feel this type of way. So, Swag Academy community, enjoy. Experience, man. Being in there, touching the cage, feeling the cage, just crazy. You can't like crazy. replicate it at all. I can't. Yeah, at you, can't all. you can't replicate it at all. Yeah, we did it a few times, but now we're going to go change real quick. Um, head back to our hotel, shower real quick, change clothes. Be back here for UFC 264, see all the fights, and um, you guys in for a good one tonight. So, I'll let you guys. Look, okay, she sent a pics of me before they hit the ground. All night we run them numbers on a fitness sand. This is cricket match, couple day affair with your wife. You think she leaving with my hoodie? Told her give it back. Stop off at the hometown, looking like I'm still the man. I see some epitomes of what it's like to finish last. I wonder what it's like to drop and ain't feeling that. Been through a lot, but I ain't never had to deal with that. And fuck about I'm bunk, I'm done laying low. I'm done acting like the enemy ain't made of gold. Solid to the core, I can never play a role. And if she tryna choose, tell her I don't take a rose Know the hit, make her fall in love and take a soul Yeah, check the body count, but I ain't saving bones This a favorite song, what's I go and lay the vows? Circle staying close, strangers taking notes, so we stay at home Trap time, I call me cooking at the crib, oh Y'all done set the boss so low, it got the game I love and live, oh Guess I gotta go and save it, kill him off and bait the minnows Tryna fry the bigger fish and set the table for the kinfo I'm pulling out the fine china, if I put out a globe, I bet you couldn't find china Can't relate to a nigga if you never let the states I'm a kind of gal, baby, I'm Japanese born and raised I heard that you got press, started telling names You obsessing over hoes, she replied, let her wait Yeah, gotta aim for the top like Hello, yeah Never doubt myself, I know better. All of you critics be acting like you know better. Blowing the smoke, but I know when the dust settles. Said I'm in my element, it's evident that this level to the game. All of those dark nights I got then breaking my back to make it out. Got me feeling like rain. I ain't never need your help. I know you wishing me well. A penny for your thoughts, but seeing no change. I snap for the sun like Diddy. The riches got a mad ass son, I'm like Billy. I ain't never switch up, whole team with me. But known for my city like OAG. Step the pace as long as you finish. Consumers find a way inside your business. Babble if they try to dabble in it, and they hate the fact that they may have to witness. You trying to aim for the top like this and you're in your element with a fire like this and they hope you fall and they bring you miss but it's all in the risk i got you with the switch you know i'm in the zone give me the throne one shot that's all that you got that's all that i know foot on the gas 155 on the road you could be a friend of me your enemy keep that same old energy because i know he's working so that is it
What up, gang? As you guys have seen, we have grown so much from me being a one man team to me, Austin, Leia, Brandon, and Bailey to having a basic website to having the greatest day trading website in the world. Countless meetings with Jeremy, Dom, Nalaja on what we can do to make the Swag Academy the number one Forex educational platform in the world. And a year later, we've accomplished it. We have the program transcribed into eight different languages. We have a social media timeline that rivals nobody. Webinars, trading sessions, I interview students who are actually successful. I have a fundamental news tab on the website. We've done so much from just a regular course website on Kajabi to where we are now. And I'm proud of not only my team, but everybody who stuck with us throughout the entire process. Cause it wasn't easy and it took a long time but i'm proud of where we are today and that goes back to what i was saying even in previous security swag episodes saying that no matter what happens i always want to make sure everything is the best that means content that means the academy that means my personal life that means my marriage everything has to be the best or i'm not doing it at all and speaking of content like i said in the beginning of this episode this is where i introduce everybody we legit have a new team everybody say what's up to man of faith creative we have brandon Savin, z jj connor dustin jonathan we have an entire army to make sure that content gets put out for swaggy c and bailey the combined duo of swaley you feel what i'm saying and last year it was so much harder because not only did me and austin have to do like almost everything for the swag academy and secure the swag like we had to do that plus the business side and same with bailey it was her and brandon alea they had to do everything like one person had to be in charge of 10 different things and that really wasn't working out and now this year brandon made sure that we had a legit army to tackle everything we got and i'm extremely blessed to have them so like i said when i keep telling y'all 2022 is going to be so much different than last year because this is not the old swaggy who lets things get to him in my mind this is not the old swaggy who wants to try 20 different businesses in two months this is a swaggy who had the team behind him who was great his wife is happier than she's ever been and i am the same as well and december 31st you guys will see the effect of the dream team but also a completely focused swaggy c huh yeah. Penny X. About to blow my top in this bitch. Okay, now I'm pissed. Nigga must not know who I'm is. Middle finger up to the two times six. I've been fucking up Huns like Mulan did. Said he gon' slide like who I wish. Beat a nigga ass like you my kids. Coming at your head like new ideas. Yo, I finally started a podcast. Finally, after I've been asked for so long. I finally started it. The team got it done. We done got a couple of interviews and the podcast is called Deep Pockets where I'm sitting down with people with a net worth of six figures or they're just flat out multi-millionaires and we're talking everything you can think of. We're talking taxes, we're talking crypto, we're talking life, we're talking day trading, we're talking finance, we're talking credit, we're talking housing, we're talking anything that I think can be of value to my community because I remember when you know, I had no money a few years ago and all I did was clean or babysit or work out. Aside from listening to music occasionally, all I would do was throw on motivational music over and over and over again. And from the looks of the interviews I've done on my channel, seeing that all of them got over 100,000 views basically, you guys have a keen interest in me doing sit down interviews. So we decided to actually have a legit podcast on it. So if you guys are ready for episode number one, do me a favor and click the link in my description to subscribe because episode number one will drop this Saturday. Here's a preview. Gang, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the podcast. This guy came into my office, Chris. And I kid you not, he showed up into my office. I saw on his tax returns, so many zeros, my head was spinning. But what really captivated me was that for someone who was making eight figures, 
net income after all of his yeah. expenses whew, that he was paying zero percent in taxes how how and i could not yeah, understand yeah, 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 it yeah, 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 yeah. i couldn't you're showing 10 million here brother but then on the tax liability line it's saying zero and then i ask you how is your life going he's like carlton i don't even know what day of the week it is that busy not that he's that busy he has not worked and it's because he had built such a big real estate portfolio that he was making 10 million dollars passively and he was paying zero percent in taxes when he left my office, he went to San Diego with his children and spent the rest of that week t taking them to SeaWorld. It was a Tuesday, Chris. He didn't know what day it was. And that's what told Yo, me I need to so understand. Wild, right? I need to understand real estate. <laughs> I need to understand real estate. And I need to understand all the tax strategies around real estate because this guy didn't start off as a, this professional investor. He probably worked for someone maybe eventually started a, a business of investing. And then eventually he built up this portfolio where he can turn around and say, yeah, I'm, I'm making 10 million passively and not paying any taxes on it. Is there anything that a day trader in the US can do to kind of lower how they're taxed? If, if it's just day trading, let's take away business and all of that. Yeah. Just day trading or once it's realized, we gotta give it up. So guys, I want to talk to you guys about something that's actually bothering me. You guys know Secure the Swag. This is my TV show. This is my platform where I talk about everything that's making me happy and kind of on the edge and upset. And this is one of the things that kind of got me on the edge. You guys know Sue Surf, right? The, the rapper, my guy. Everything Surf has come out with, I've supported. He's come out with merchandise and I've bought all of his merchandise. When I first started my YouTube channel, I used only his music and nobody else's. I went to all the battle rap events to support him. You can match Surf and Rock with anybody else in that card. And that chemistry they had was unmatched. You know what I mean? Like nobody else in that card had better chemistry than Surf and Rock. When he was in jail, literally wrote letters to him every single week to support. He wrote me back because obviously he knew who I was. Hey, surf. What up, boy? What up, boy? My man living good. He said he holding his head up. He can't complain or cry over spilled milk. And on top of that, my man's coming right to CT with it. First tour back home. First day out. What up? Surf. Free to wave out. Ooh. Surf through y'all surf, you heard? Free surf, y'all. Free surf. The issue I'm having with surf is, you guys heard the theme song in the beginning of this episode. That was from Neighborhood Nick, right? What nobody knows is Sue Surf was actually supposed to do the theme song for season three of Secure the Swag. Around August, probably the second week of August, his team had told me, you know, his fee and all that extra stuff. And I actually gave them double for what I wanted in an expedited time. You know, I said I needed it in about two or three weeks. And they said, okay, just shoot me 6,000. I have them do this for you. Gave the 6,000 to them in a matter of 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And we are about a week away from February. And I have not heard from them, have not got the verse, no nothing. I reached out several times. And it just seems like surf doesn't care. And this is where I talk about like the art of actually losing a fan. And this, you know, section is more so directed towards leaders who are in big positions. When you have somebody who supports you that much and actually puts money in your pocket, do not neglect them. And with me and surf, it wasn't like a, oh, I'm just a fan. No, I, I've talked to surf on several occasions. And in this situation, giving somebody six thousand dollars with a time frame of two to three weeks that they said that's easy and sometimes they could take as little as 30 minutes and it's been five or six months and the thing is like six thousand dollars is a lot of money but surf knows his team knows they know how much money i make they know it's not about the money it's more about the principle i gave you money what you requested I actually gave you more than you requested for a service and not only has it been close to six months and I haven't even really gotten any work. It's different if you sent over a rough draft and I didn't like it and there's too many revisions. I've gotten absolutely nothing. 
And then when I said, you know what, it's been too long, I'm just gonna go in a different route, like please send the 6,000 back. They said, oh, that money's been dispersed, can't do it. So you spent the money, but you won't get me my verse for my TV show that I take very, very seriously. Like not only does it, you know, do a lot for my own life, it does a lot for people out there who actually watch the show, especially my channel in general. And you just, disregarded my brand as if you did not care so this is really how you lose a fan and it's been so many times you could have made up for it you know reaching back out the second month the third month the fourth month the fifth yo i've been backed up but here it is month five i apologize i even made it a little bit longer made it better just for you because of the weight nothing at all and i want to give an example i had a student who said yo to me i think this was about two three weeks ago he said yo I made my first $25,000, right, in a month. I did that last, I don't know, two months ago. I sent you a DM, but like to celebrate, you didn't open it. I sent it to another trader and he was like, yo, that's so dope. So that made me want to be a fan of his instead of yours. And I reached back out to him like, yo, I apologize, bro. I've been busy, but shout out to that other trader for making sure you were good. Anything you need from now on, I got you. And guess what? The fan came right back. He was like, yo, I always loved you. I always wanted to be you know, supportive of you. I just felt disregarded, got on a call with him. Like, yo, my bad, bro. I was in the mood, this and that and that. Did a whole hour call with him. Like. You, you had to pay attention to people who actually take time out of the day to support you because I am not in this position because I'm just this great person or this great whatever. Like, there's been so many people who supported me, you, Swaggy C, like, we're going to lift you up. And because they did that, I'm here and I have to make sure everybody is okay. So, in closing, Surf was supposed to do the intro for Secure the Swag. He did not do it. Neighborhood Nick came through and did it in a few days. Um... I guess I just got to take the L on $6,000. And I just don't understand how people do business. Like I see all the tweets on how they want to be multi-millionaires and X, Y, and Z. You have a chance to do something for a multi-millionaire and you just don't, I don't understand how they don't understand karma. Like it's a, it's a real thing. So sir, if you out there listening to this, bro, you for sure, for sure, for sure lost a fan. And I'm pretty sure you probably don't even care. And if you don't care, it definitely says a lot about you. Like I said, the crazy part is I've been a, a fan of, of Sirs for seven years. Like I, I love his music. I love the Raw Bunch. I love it all, but it's just hard to, you know, support somebody in that capacity to the fullest ability when a situation, a personalized situation like this happens. It, it causes me to kind of retreat and kind of fall back a little bit. And I, I know people are gonna watch this and be like, oh, it is what it is, get over it. This is my show. This, this is Secure the Swag. I talk about everything that makes me happy and sad. And this is something that has been on my mind for the last six months. I just have never said anything about it. Overall, if you're a leader out there, please pay attention to your fans. It definitely can do wonders for your brand. How about you guys? Gang, now y'all see why we took a full year for Secure the Swag. Thank you for watching the episode. I really, really, really appreciate your love and support. So much happened in my life that caused me to not only back off, but really not even focus on Secure the Swag. And I neglected it for so long. I guarantee you, I will not neglect it this year at all. This was the first 35, 40-ish minute episode we've ever had. Everything has been in between 17 to 23 minutes. And um, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed episode one. And if there's anything that I learned last year through everything is trust. Trust is a big thing and trust is a major thing that was broken for me last year with just a lot of situations and a lot of people. I feel like it's not just one person, it's at least eight to 10 people who I feel like have caused me to be this way where now my guard is up and I don't really trust anybody. I feel like a lot of people are very, very, very ungrateful girls boys like I, I put a lot of energy time and money into a lot of people a lot of situations a lot of deals a lot of employees a lot of family members who when they got back to good they just turned their back and i feel like that's a major lesson that i've learned and that's why i feel like i'm, I'm better at it now i'm better at managing it now so i feel like now in 2022 all i'm doing is focusing on you guys i'm focusing on the people who i know for a fact if all of this goes away tomorrow will still be here a lot of the people who hurt me came 
when I've been in a situation, when I've been rich and successful, nobody has hurt me who have known me before all of this. And I think that's a major point where I'm going to just spend time with my mother, my brothers, my best friends from high school, and just uh, focus on that and focus on a new team who's obviously helping and um, just continue just continue to focus in, in that direction. So overall, I appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks for watching episode one. It was a banger. Tell me how good that episode was. And uh, episode two, we got a lot more for y'all. I'll holla at y'all. Next week on Secure the Swag, I'm not even gonna say a lot of the thing that's actually going to happen, but I will make note of one thing to you all. It is my birthday. Next week, the next time you guys will see Secure the Swag, it will be Swaggy C's birthday. And when it's Swaggy C's birthday, what does that mean? It is an anniversary of the Swag Academy. Officially, the two year anniversary of the launching of the Swag Academy. And we did something crazy last year, and you know for a fact, we will do something crazy again this year. That's all I'll say.